Hello my dear children welcome to learners planet children in the previous session we discussed about moon in detail that is we discussed about the surface of the moon phases of the moon and landing on the moon and in today's session we will continue this lesson and we'll learn about the artificial satellites and the eclipses which occur in the solar system right so let us start with this session children yes first of all we will study about artificial satellites so what are actually satellites yes children satellites are the objects that orbit a planet for example the moon is the natural satellite of the earth but what is the main difference between the satellite and the artificial satellite yes satellites means they are natural satellites and there are artificial satellites the natural satellites which already occur in the solar system for example the moons of different planets like the moon is the natural satellite of the earth and two moons the smallest moons in the solar system named popularly named as phobos and deimos they are the two moons of the mars and they also act as the natural satellite of the planet mars so these are some of the moons which occur as natural satellites of the planet but artificial satellites does not occur already in the solar system they are the man made objects that orbit the earth right so there are many artificial satellites but it is not limited up to our planet the earth there are many other artificial satellites means the man made objects that orbit other planets so the researchers are going on right so in order to launch satellites the artificial satellites into space we need to overcome the earth's gravity so this is one such major thing which we have to keep in mind whenever we have to launch any artificial satellite into space we need to overcome the earth's gravity so what is to be done to overcome the earth's gravity yes to overcome the earth's gravity this is achieved by launching the artificial satellites by powerful rockets and that is why they are able to remain there in the solar system and uh, in the space and that is why they are able to orbit the earth so the first artificial satellite the man made object that orbit the earth was sputnik 1 launched by soviet union in 1957 now almost 50 years later there are thousands of satellites orbiting the earth at various heights and that is why now many other artificial satellites have been launched after the soviet union in 1957 yes so the soviet union was the one who also launched a probe called as luna 1 into space that was supposed to crash into the surface of the moon and after that also they launched many other probes but before that they made an artificial satellite so there are number of satellites that orbit the earth and that is why we get many information about the earth so let us see some of the indian satellites the indian artificial satellites which have been launched yes most indian satellites are also launched like insat 1 insat 1 means they are named as insat 1a insat 1b insat 1c 2a 2b 2c etc for various other purposes for different purposes there is also kalpana 1 a meteorological satellite formerly called as metsat 1 means met means meteorological and sat means satellite so it is named as metsat 1 even there is a gsat which is an experimental satellite and edusat which is which is an educational satellite broadcast channel because of which we are able to study smartly right so these are some of the indian satellites other than this nsat 1 NSAT NSAT sorry it's not one NSAT 4CR is the most recently satellite having launched and this is a telecommunication satellite launched by India one of the 10 similar ones that India has already launched so these are some of the artificial satellites launched by India and there are many other satellites launched by US United States and other countries so let us see that how much and in what ways these artificial satellites are useful to us what is the meaning what is the importance of 
making such man-made objects called as artificial satellites. Yes, there are different types of satellites and each are designed for a specific purpose like the communication satellite. The satellites called as communication satellites are used to relay telephone messages and radio and television signals and radio programs and telephone calls. It is such satellites that have made it possible for us to see on TV and that to watch live. For example, watching cricket live, tennis matches live and many other things and all such things, all such programs have been played in other countries and that too live. So we are able to watch live performances which are going on all over the world. Formerly, one had to wait till the next day to see the recorded version but nowadays these satellites are very useful to us. There are some artificial satellites like navigation satellites that help ships and aircraft to find their way. So how much helpful they can be to us, right? So this is one such picture of an artificial satellite and this is also one of the picture which shows that artificial satellites orbit the earth. Yes, there are other satellites like astronomy satellites that carry telescopes into space and they gather and send back the information about the earth and its surroundings and this information is of very immense value to weather forecasters, scientists, military planners and farmers and also to the fishermen. So it is a major effect, a major effect which is going on to study the earth and all ecological changes taking place on the earth through satellites. Like there are weather satellites that help in weather forecasting and they are very helpful to us to know for knowing about the natural calamities, the future natural calamities which will occur, right? There are other like other satellites which are also helpful to us to predict the flood or the earthquake which is going to which will be going to take place which will take place so these are some of the useful information which we can get through the artificial satellites there are even ground stations on the earth which send and receive signals to and from these satellites so satellites can also provide ecologists with detailed images of every square meter of the earth's surface for study. As there is no air in the outer space and therefore no air resistance, satellites do not have to be sleek and streamlined and this is one such advantage of making artificial satellite. So artificial satellites do not have to be sleek and streamlined just like rockets. So they come in variety of shapes depending upon the job they have to do. So these are some of the useful information about artificial satellites, right? So this was all about these interesting satellites, these interesting man-made objects. Now let us move on to other interesting topic known as the eclipses. So let us move on to the topic. Yes, eclipses. Now what is, what does this term mean? To be eclipsed means to be hidden. Sometimes the sun, moon and the earth come into the position as though they are all in a straight line. And at times the earth comes between the moon and the sun and at other times the moon comes between the sun and the earth. So this is one such phenomenon in which one object will come in between and it will play a game in between the two and one will hide behind the other from the sun. So this are such phenomena which takes place and one object which gets hidden is said to be eclipsed. So let us see that what gets behind what. What object behaves at as a shadow and what object behaves as an eclipsed one. Yes. At such times the one in the middle casts a shadow which partially or wholly hides the other from the sun. And that is why it is called an eclipse because it gets hidden, right? So there are two pictures given over here. This is the picture of a solar eclipse and this is a picture of a lunar eclipse. So let us now study about this lunar and solar eclipse in detail. So the first one we are going to study is lunar eclipse. Children, lunar eclipses when the earth comes between the sun and the moon, it blocks a lot of sunlight from reaching the moon and then creates a shadow. So who creates a shadow over here? Yes, the earth. So these are the three objects which play an important role in the lunar eclipse. Earth which is a planet, sun which is a star and moon which is a natural satellite of the earth. So these are three different objects and here the earth comes in between the sun and the moon 
and that is why earth here creates a shadow and it blocks the sunlight from reaching the moon so this is called an eclipse of the moon or lunar eclipse right because here moon will get hidden because of the earth and it will be able to reach or the sunlight would be blocked from reaching the moon so let us see one diagrammatic representation of lunar eclipse yes here you can see that this is the sun in the middle it is earth and here are some of the pictures of the moon means it is showing the different positions of the moon first moon was totally visible after some time what happened that the position of the moon changed and the earth started to come in between the sun and the moon and that is why this moon got partially hidden and after some time the position of the moon changed and wholly or we can say totally the moon was hidden from the sun right and it was because of this earth so the eclipse of the moon which occurred over here is actually termed as lunar eclipse and that is why they are basically divided into two regions on the basis of the position of the moon when moon is actually totally hidden because of the earth from the sun the region is termed as the umbra region and when it is partially hidden when the moon is partially hidden it is termed as penumbra region so let us see more clearly define definitions of umbra and penumbra regions yes the earth shadow has two parts the umbra where it totally blocks the sunlight and penumbra where it blocks a part of the sunlight as we discussed with the image so remember one thing children that lunar eclipse may be partial or total so in short we can say as the eclipse of the moon happens when the earth gets between the sun and the moon so the light from the sun can't catch to the moon to be reflected towards the earth and in other words we can say the shadow of the earth covers the whole moon so a total eclipse of the moon can only happen when the moon is full because that's when the moon is exactly opposite from the sun in the sky and the moon is full about once in a month but eclipses happen less often because sometimes the moon is too high or too low for the earth shadow to fall on it so usually lunar eclipses happen 2 to 4 times a year so it is very interesting to see such lunar eclipses which happen 2 to 4 times a year sometimes they are full eclipses and sometimes they are only the part of the moon which is eclipsed so whenever there is an eclipse of the moon anyone on the night side of the earth can see it always remember that a lunar eclipse can last up to an hour and a half so during a lunar eclipse the moon may also turn a reddish color now you must be thinking that if it turns into a reddish color then it might be dangerous to see it might be dangerous to view at but remember it is not dangerous at all to look at a lunar eclipse because moon does not make lights of its own it is the reflected sunlight which we see as a moonlight from the earth when viewed from the earth so always remember that it is not dangerous at all to look at the lunar eclipse because the moon does not have its own light right so remember this this was all about lunar eclipse now let us move on to the solar eclipse yes now what happens here the twist is that the when the moon comes between the earth and the sun it blocks the sunlight to an extent so who is playing role in between yes the moon the moon is now sandwiched between the earth and the sun it is just an imaginary just a joke that it is sandwiched but it but it is actually not sandwiched sandwiched means it is totally blocked by earth and the sun but here when the sun comes between the earth and the sun the it blocks the sunlight to an extent as you know that moon is actually very much smaller than the sun sun is so huge and moon is so small so we cannot say that sun will be totally hidden it is not possible right so because of the moon comes in between the sun which the sunlight which is blocked because of this position of the moon the sun looks as it has a disk in front of it that creates a shadow and that is why this is termed as a solar eclipse as the sun is eclipsed or hidden partially from the view now remember it can cannot be totally eclipsed because sun is very much huge than the moon so let us see one diagrammatic representation of a solar eclipse yes this is the diagrammatic representation of solar eclipse where there is a sun here there is earth and in between it is the moon 
and when this partially or wholly hidden picture comes into place then umbra and penumbra regions take place right so how can we define these regions in in the case of solar eclipse let us see yes the moon shadow also has the two parts like the earth has in the lunar eclipse umbra and the penumbra region when the moon's penumbral shadow reaches the earth we can see a partial eclipse from that region of the earth and the regions in the umbra shadow experience is the total eclipse when viewed from the earth so in short we can say that a solar eclipse occurs when the moon goes in front of the sun and blocks most of the sun's light from the earth and during a total eclipse all we can see from the earth is a ring of light around the moon which is a part of the sun and it is a part of the sun the moon did not cover because moon is very small right so it is not able to cover the whole part of the sun and that is why a ring of light around the moon occurs which is actually the light of the sun so it is dangerous to look at a solar eclipse directly even if we have wear the sun glasses or the smoked glass so it is better to view solar eclipses through a pin hole projector now why is it dangerous to look at the solar eclipse but not at the lunar eclipse remember the moon does not have the light of its own and that is why it is not dangerous to look at the solar eclipse at all even we can directly see the solar uh, lunar eclipse but not the solar eclipse why children it is very dangerous to see solar eclipse directly because as you know that sun provides us with so much of heat and light right and a part of sun has actually ultraviolet rays which are very much harmful for us so if we will directly see the solar eclipse or if we will try to see directly the solar eclipse it may cause a disorder it may cause something to our eyesight because the ultraviolet rays will directly affect our eyesight and that is why it may also lead to some eye defect and that is why it is told it is said or it is advised to see a solar eclipse through a pinhole projector right so this was all about the eclipses i hope you are clear with the eclipses topic now let us move on to other interesting topic and that is india's mission to the moon we studied about the landing on the moon but now let us study about the india's mission to the moon yes the india's mission to the moon the chandrayaan 1 mission is the india's first spacecraft to the moon and it was launched in 2003 but the launch date of the moon probe was set for late 2008 now try to recall that what happened in 2003 when chandrayaan 1 mission was announced yes kalpana chavla kalpana chavla died in 2003 and how she died and what is actually the main thing which we remember about kalpana chavla Yes, she was the first Indian born woman to fly in space. How amazing. On her first mission, she spent more than 360 hours in space taking 252 orbits of the earth and traveling over 10.4 million miles. But unfortunately, she died on the space mission in the space shuttle called Columbia. when her shuttle met with an accident shortly before reaching the earth and at that time only chandrayaan 1 mission which was the india's first spacecraft which is actually india's first spacecraft to the moon was announced in 2003 and what was this mission about yes the mission was launched by india's national space agency the indian space research organization also popularly called as isro on 22nd of october 2008 from satish dhawan space center shri harikota located in andhra pradesh and this mission is supposed to map the moon's surface in high resolution and also to get more details about the moon so this mission was all about collecting the gathering the information and details about the moon so that we can know more about the moon right so this was all about the india's mission to the moon the chandrayaan one mission i hope that you are clear with this thing yes and this is one of the image which shows the chandrayaan one mission to the moon this is the moon and this is our chandrayaan one the first spacecraft right so this was all about our artificial satellites and eclipses and our mission to the moon so i hope you enjoyed today's session and learned many things about our solar system so we will meet in the next less next session with a new lesson till then keep learning keep enjoying thank you children